Hi, I'm David Browning with the Browning Fishing Team. Today, we're going to tell Oct about bait. We're going to start our bait series. It's going to be part one of all of our bait videos. Today, we're going to talk about shrimp and fiddler crabs. Those two things. And then, next, the next video, we're going to talk about our pinfish, thread fins, mullet, ladyfish. So today, we're just going to talk about crustaceans. And this is going to be part of our inshore series of bait. We're going to have videos about bait for the beach, pier, and surf, offshore, near shore, and what kind of rods you need, cast nets, and so much more. I have videos on my channel, Breathing Fishing Team, about how to throw cast nets, a 4 foot, a 6 foot, and a 10 foot cast net. So go check them out, and comment below if you want a video on a sheep's head. Um, I know some people fish sheep's head through Easter. And, but for me, I stopped fishing in March when the kingfish start running in my area. So comment below if you want a video. Some of you might have the same pattern. Some of you might have already stopped. Some of you guys might go a little longer. But comment below if you want a video about sheep's head soon. That would be the next video if enough people comment about it. So let's talk about shrimp. So shrimp is a very versatile bait. It catches absolutely everything in shore. Okay? Other than a mullet, because mullet are vegetarians. So, these will catch tarpon, snook, redfish, sea trout, black drum, redfish, um, pompano, and whiting. I know they're more of like a beach fish, but they also do come inshore too. Grouper and snapper too, especially in the summertime. Those shrimp were really, really good in the summertime for snapper. So, Let's talk about where you can catch shrimp. So you can catch shrimp off the bank of a river, especially if you live like St. John's River in the summertime. They absolutely crush the shrimp up there. So off a bank, off a pier, off a dock, pretty much anywhere, a boat, anywhere you can get and throw a cast net is what they, a lot of people do. Now shrimp don't move fast, so you don't necessarily need a big cast net. So, this is what I'm going to say. If you want to cast net in deeper water, you need a bigger cast net. Okay? And heavier weights too. That way you can sink faster. And ultimately, by the end of the day, you'll be able to throw your cast net more. And that will lead to higher amounts of shrimp being caught. Now, if you're doing this, you most likely be eating them and not catching them for bait. But, because they're so plentiful, if you're in an area where they're running good quick throw of the cast net and you can just go fishing right away rather than having to go run to the bait shop it probably take about the same time you might save money you might not you but the good thing is if you do get your own shrimp and you have extras you got a good dinner so cast net size doesn't really matter if you're casting in shallower water it doesn't really matter but a bigger cast net will let you cover a bigger area which is nice and very crucial to letting you catch more and bigger shrimp. So if you're casting in deeper water, you're going to want a bigger cast net because it's going to get smaller. So you can also dip net them. You can sit at the where the current is running to your advantage. Where, so that way the shrimp are coming to you with a green light or a white light. Those are the two color lights I would recommend at night with a dip net or you could use a cast net too. And then you could throw your power pole in, just spot lock it, or this is what I hear is really effective, so listen up. Take your anchor, anchor, put the anchor ball, attach the anchor ball, put a big bag, like a chum bag, full of oatmeal, full of oatmeal. Just fill it up with oatmeal. If you're going to be out there all night, bring some extra oatmeal, and have your boat sitting in the direction of the current that way the oatmeal is like creating a chum slick for the shrimp and then you're dip netting them with your dip net or you're cast netting them I would recommend dip netting unless you're just gonna go right away like if you finish dip netting and you have a cast net and you're like one last I'll just do one throw there's a lot of shrimp out here quick throw of the cast net boom you got a bunch you're going home so that's something you can keep in mind on what you can do and now, let's talk about what rig you should use real quick. 
you should use with regular shrimp. I would recommend using this for smaller shrimp, like regular. This D&B Sheep's Head Rig. It's two per pack. There's ten packs when you buy them with free shipping. That's 20 total rigs for price of one with free shipping, which is really nice. So now let's talk about fiddler crabs. So fiddler crabs are not that hard to catch. They don't catch as a big variety of fish, but they will catch redfish, black drum, and sheep's head really well all day long. And even pompano too and whiting. So for fiddler crabs to catch them, you can dig them up. So like you look for sand and little balls because that's where they're eating. They're filtering through the sand and they're getting nutrients out and they're eating it. So look for those little balls and their little holes. And then you can take a shovel and dig them up. Or like if it's like a mangrove area, you can use like a shop vac is what I hear people even using. You could even use it during when sandy areas. Problem is that when you use a shop vac in sandy areas, you also pick up some of the sand, which just more work cleaning out your shop vac. But you can just see them and you just shot back them up. Shoom, 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 and you get a whole bunch of filler crabs. That's something fun you can do with your family. And then also, with filler crabs, when you go to catch them, you might be in an area with a whole bunch of them so you can catch a lot of them at once. So, with filler crabs, you're going to want to look for sandy areas, mangrove areas, really good. And then also, you're going to want to look for areas where there is not a lot of people. That way you know people aren't stealing your bait, you're not competing with other people, it's just nicer. And if you're on your own dock, sometimes you'll see uh, little filler crabs crawling up. And that's something really nice if you're on your own dock. Do not, do not, do not go to other people's docks and go pick up their filler crabs because that's just kind of annoying. I would not like that somebody did it at my dock. That should make me kind of mad. So, if you have your own dock, that's something nice to have to help you catch um, fiddler crabs. Also, if you're just fishing off your dock. So, for fiddler crabs, I would also recommend using this DNB sheep's head rigs. And when you go to hook them, hook them from the top of the shell on the corner and make it go through the end. And then also, it's a male fiddler crab. Those are the ones with the big claws. Grab the claw so it's in like on their body like this. And then you're holding them down by the bottom. So, you're basically just grabbing them. Because the little claws don't hurt, especially if a little kid is holding it. Make sure that big claw is not going to hurt, because it doesn't hurt. It won't cut you, it won't break your finger, it won't do anything like that. It's just going to sting a lot, and you're gonna, you might go like this, and your fiddler crab will end up going in the water, and it's like, wow, wasted time. So you don't want to do that, and you want to have maximize your fishing time, because a few seconds could matter a fish, or several fish. It might, You might have started your fishing time in the middle of a hot bite and you just want to maximize on your time out there on the water so those DMB sheep's head rigs are really stealthy they really crush the sheep's head they're very good very productive rigs the only sheep's head rigs I buy from the only company because they are just absolutely amazing you even catch snook on them trout um, redfish you, you put shrimp on them and you catch snook, trout, and redfish. Filler crabs would work good for black drum, for sheep's head, and redfish. So they're a very good rig to have. Also, in the summertime when you're going around docks or structures for this mangrove snapper on the full moon, those work really good with shrimp too. So that's something to keep in mind. And then also, when you go and you fish these rigs, Make sure you're fishing them where structure is so you can be more productive with them. So if you're like fishing next to a dock, a bridge, some rubble pile, or anywhere, wherever, make sure there's some structure. That way the fish can congregate. Also, if you go in sandy areas where there's flounder, those work good for flounder too. Put a little regular shrimp on them, let them sit, do his thing, anchor up, use a power pole, just sit there, and you'll catch flounder like that too. What I like is that it lets the bait move very naturally. So that's something very important is to have a natural moving presentation. That way the fish aren't like, oh that's not real and they get spooked. So and then also here is a bonus. If you want to catch big black drum, take the claws off a of blue crab, put a big circle hook in the blue crab depending on the size, put a three or four ounce weight knock a rig it next to a bridge like a major bridge 
like in this area over here um the skyway bridge even some of the littler bridges skyway bridges i've heard of people catching especially howard franklin bridges and the bridges farther up in the tampa bay but that's more of a near shore thing that will be covered more in a near shore video and this is inshore focused on crustaceans so that's very good to know and then by the way i'll have a link below where you can buy these in the description so make sure you check them out buy them you just need to buy one because uh sheep season is almost over but if you want to use them for flounder or stuff like that go ahead and buy a few more check them out on later in the year keep it in the back of your mind um just bookmark where you're buying them i'll have a link in the description below and make sure to buy those rigs because they're super good and they're essential if you want to be successful and catch lots of fish just a few weekends ago me and my brother, we both caught a 40 inch snook on them, and we each caught two big 40 inch redfish on them. So those things will catch big fish too. And we each caught like 10 fi pinfish, I mean, sorry. We each caught 10 sheep's head on them with shrimp and fiddler crabs. And we actually ended up throwing most of our sh shrimps, I mean, sheep's head back. And our we threw back our redfish and our snook because it's catching the least right now. But we kept four or five sheep's head each and we had, they were a big sheep's head too they weren't these little teeny tiny ones they're the big ones and those rigs really I think were the reason why we were successful because those rigs were just so good and what's also nice is that if live bait I mean li if live bait is something that you're really good at using it's something you really capitalize also if you're not having good luck with artificial lures switch over to live bait and you might turn on the bite right away so that's something really good to keep in mind so check out the DMB sheep's head rigs down in the description below I'll have them linked in the description below make sure to subscribe hit the notification bell that way you don't miss any future videos next video talking about the fish pilchers pinfish thread fins ladyfish and mullet so check out the video that's coming up next Make sure to like this video if it was helpful, and subscribe, hit the notification bell, that way you don't miss the future videos. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time.